This is the final revision video for Sredni Vashtar by Saki for your IGCSE English Literature exams, the pro section. So this video will look at irony in Sredni Vashtar, the writer's effect, and we will finish by looking at some essay questions. So the irony in Sredni Vashtar. There's a few incidents, examples of irony in this short story. Firstly, Comedon's faith. He does not believe in the traditional religion as Mrs. Derop does. Remember, she goes to church every Thursday. His faith is in his God, Sredni Vashtar. And his faith is justified just at the moment that he loses it. Remember, it says, just as Sredni Vashtar, sorry, just as Mrs. Durop goes to the shed, Comedon says, or the narrator says, he knew as he prayed that he did not believe. This is Comedon losing his faith in his God, Sredni Vashtar. Even though he wished that it could be true, he knew in his heart of hearts that he did not believe. But right at this point where his faith is the lowest, his greatest wish is granted. His greatest wish is that Sredni Vashtar will kill Mrs. Durop. And just when he's losing his faith, his faith comes through. This is ironic because you would expect the opposite. You would expect that a person's faith would be repaid when he has the most faith, not the least. So this is an example of irony. Also another example of irony in this short story is the fact that it's actually Mrs. Durop who dies and not Comradin. So at the beginning of the story, the narrator explains that Comradin is sick and he doesn't have long to live. It says, Comradin is going to die in five years. But ironically, instead of Comradin dying, it is Mrs. Durop. Also, and you might want to question this, this is just my idea. It does seem somewhat ironic that a boy who is supposed to be dying soon, he's fated to die, it's his destiny, to die soon, would want to withdraw from the world. You might think that actually if somebody knew they were going to die that they would want to embrace life and get as much as they can from life, right? So maybe it is ironic that actually he decided to withdraw from the world or withdraw from the world of reality and he withdrew into his imagination. Maybe this is ironic Maybe it's just his way of coping with his, what you could actually call abuse. That's for you to decide. Okay, writer's effect. How the, or what language the writer chooses and how the writer builds up his or her story to have an effect on the reader. So, Saki powerfully conveys the feeling of Comradin being oppressed and in search of freedom. This is an important idea for you to understand, the fact that Comradin is oppressed and Mrs. Durop is the oppressor and he's in search of freedom. Comradin is in search of freedom. How does Saki, how, sorry, how does Saki powerfully convey the idea of Comradin being oppressed? Have a think about that. Also, Saki paints a picture of suffocating oppression for Comradin. How do you think he does this? Think about the setting, the garden, the fact that he is not allowed to do a lot of things. Um, think of the word choice and the language that Saki uses to show this suffocating oppression. Comedin's cousin, Mrs. Durop, is described as representing three-fifths of the world that is necessary and disagreeable and real. 
in Comradin's life, while Comradin is left with only two-fifths for himself and his own imagination. And even that is in perpetual antagonism to the world Mrs. de Rop represents. So Mrs. de Rop basically controls his life. She controls two, sorry, three-fifths of his life and Comradin is left with only two-fifths of control. And part of that is his imagination. So she is definitely his oppressor. How does this make the reader feel? How do you feel about firstly Comradin and secondly Mrs. de Rop? And why is Saki chosen to show this and this through this word choice? Comradin's life was one of constant internal conflict. He is pictured as an inward rebel. He is rebelling against Mrs. de Rop through his use of his imagination. And it's inward because Mrs. de Rop doesn't actually realize that he's rebelling. But he wants to keep some control for himself. So it is a silent, inward rebellion. It's the only way he can maintain some feeling of self, some feeling of identity, and some feeling of autonomy. Autonomy means independence in his severely micromanaged life. Micromanaged means that somebody manages every last detail of something. Despite this, he fears that he would grow ever more sickly under her pestering and domineering and superior wisdom. So even though he has <clears throat> rebelled and gone into his own imagination, he still can't imagine that he will be triumphant. He can only imagine her continuing to manage his life. Does this make you sympathize with Comradin? Why, if it, if it does, and why not, if it doesn't? And why do you think that Saki does this? Why does Saki want us to sympathize with Comradin? Comradin chooses to worship in his own way. So there is definitely a religious theme running through this story, clearly. Mrs. de Rop has her own traditional religion that she follows, whereas Comradin has a very different religion. He has made Sredni Vashtar, the ferret, into his god, and he worships him in his own way. He calls Mrs. de Rop's church services an alien right in the house of Rimen, but his own worship is full of images of idol worship. And you might like, or you should, read this quote and think about this in terms of religion and why Saki has chosen to compare these very different religions. What does it add to the story? Linked to this, Sredni Vashtar is a heathen god of violence. Heathen means not of a god, not of a traditional god as we know it. And he's definitely a god of violence. He is not the kind of god who helps people, um, who is all about the good in the world. He's a murderer. Comradin's worship, sorry, um, Sredni Vashtar's worshipper, Comradin. Comradin is the one who worships Sredni Vashtar. So Comradin indulges in ruthless and vindictive celebrations when an enemy suffers. In this case, Comradin celebrates for three days when the woman, or Mrs. de Rob, suffers from a toothache. Remind yourself of that quote. And have a think, why does Saki make the ferret into a god? What does it add to the story? It adds a lot. <laughs> Without this, it would be a very different story. And you might like to read through the story and try to find um, words that have connotation with 
religion and God and worship. This imagery of primitive idol worship, complete with sacrificial offerings, the sacrificial offerings, um, there's a few examples given in the story, represents Comedin's rebellion. Rebellion against Mrs. Durop and the outside world and his quest for freedom against the oppressive tyranny of his guardian. Mrs. Durop's self-righteous coddling is confining and suffocating for him. She suffocates him through her behavior. However, she is oblivious. She doesn't realize any insensitiv insensitivity on her part, at least not consciously. Maybe subconsciously she does. When she sells the hooden hen, she thinks that she's doing Comradin a favor. And you can see that from this quote. With her short-sighted eyes, she peered at Comradin, waiting for an outbreak of rage and sorrow, which she was ready to rebuke to fight with a flow of excellent precepts and reasoning. So she was ready to argue against this with excellent reasoning to why she sold the hen. Have a think, why do you think that Saki includes the sale of the hen in his story? What does it add to the story? And how does it change or build on our view of Mrs. Durop's behavior? and Comedin's behavior? Does it help us to sympathize with Comedin and hate Mrs. Durop even more? <clears throat> Saki cleverly omits mentioning what the boon is, but the reader does recognize the defiant hymn of an avid worshiper who worships a god he hopes will provide re revenge in due time. Remind yourself of this chant. Sredni Vashtar went forth, his thoughts were red thoughts, and his teeth were white. His enemies called for peace, but he brought them death. Sredni Vashtar the beautiful. This is what Comradin chants to Sredni Vashtar when Mrs. Durop goes into the shed. What makes this chant so powerful for you? Think about the imagery in it as well. And the end. Saki describes the calm worshipper, Comradin, enjoying his food, the toast, with a sinister calmness, indulging in a sickeningly sensuous decadence. It is, uh, sorry, during the toasting of it and the butter, buttering of it with much butter and the slow enjoyment of eating it. Remember what's just happened. He has just seen... Sredni Vashtar come out of the shed covered in blood. He knows that Mrs. Durop has died or been murdered and he slowly enjoys eating the toast. What image and feelings does that give you? This is an incredibly powerful ending. When Saki alludes to the death of Comradin's guardian at the hands of the ferret god, the shocking imagery in this story is complete. The worshipper, Comradin, is satisfied. He has been avenged. He has got his revenge. So, some essay questions. These are all about the ending. Different ways you could be asked to discuss the ending. Explore how Saki makes the ending of Sredni Vashtar particularly effective. Or how does Saki make the ending so disturbing for you in Sredni Vashtar? Or how does Saki make this such a powerful ending to Sredni Vashtar? All very similar, but we have effective, disturbing, powerful. Another essay question. What does Saki make you feel about Comradin in Sredni Vashtar? Does he make you feel sympathetic or does he make you feel horror? Or does he make you feel both? And you'd have to discuss the language in this story, in this question. Finally, what makes Sredni Vashtar so shocking? Definitely discuss the ending in this, 
and the abuse that Mrs. Durop 